in this session let us introduce induction machine okay basically induction machine stator side okay induction machine rotor will be there stator will be there stator we don't analyze in induction machine because stator analysis like you know stator winding will be short pitch winding stator winding will be distributed winding okay how stator is producing rotating magnetic field and all those things already we completed in synchronous so stator winding normally in induction machine will not be discussed only rotor winding only will be discussed okay now means basic rules are fundamentally very same what are those in compulsory in all rotating machines stator number of poles and rotor number of poles should be same okay and what is the second condition in order to have continuous electromagnetic torque okay stator mmf and rotor mmf should be stationary in space with respect to each other and displaced by non -dis uh, displaced by non zero space displacement angle then only we will get continuous electromagnetic torque those are all basic concepts of rotating machine in all machines they will be same okay now means basically induction machine is singly excited machine like transformer like transformer of course we can keep like you know many similarities between transformer and uh, induction machine and we can write many dissimilarities or differences also between transformer and uh, induction machine but here means from that area problems cannot come but we have to understand what is meant by singly excited machine okay for example if you think of a transformer okay in this transformer if i think of this winding primary and this is going to be secondary okay in this primary we are going to keep the supply supply voltage source voltage okay for example load is open load is yet to be connected to transformer then what will happen means who will develop the flux here automatically like my stator only from induction machine point of view or primary only will take no load current okay now that no load current will set up the flux that particular flux will induce voltages here voltages here okay now if you close the switch if you close the switch i2 will flow okay so i2 dash will flow here now from primary point of view our kind of stator of induction machine point of view my stator will take no load current to set up the flux and my stator or primary only will take the reflected current of armature currents also because load currents are nothing but armature currents okay so in transformer there is only one winding one winding to set up the flux and to carry the armature currents also okay if you think of induction machine okay let us consider this a a dash b b dash c c dash okay if i supply voltage a b c here okay supply voltage if i supply here then for example rotor is not there forget about rotor forget about rotor then means the moment you have like you know space displaced windings and connected to time displaced voltages time displaced voltages automatically rotating magnetic field will be formed from the stator or not yes which will be rotating at synchronous speed which will be rotating at synchronous speed why i have taken in this direction because first a maximum after that b maximum after that c maximum abc phase sequence so my rmf has to rotate in this direction only now means where is rotor rotor is not there but in the air gap flux is being set up or not who will set up the flux here current okay now kind of no load currents will flow okay for example if i think of rotor is here rotor is here okay so if i consider the rotor here okay now here some conductors are there for example okay so in rotor if some conductors are there because of this particular rotation because of this particular rotation induced voltages will be there here in these conductors are not yes because for example you are tightly holding the rotor not to rotate okay so my rotor is at stanchial condition you are sitting on the conductor now these poles are rotating virtually so as of now maximum flux density is there so maximum induced voltage will be there here okay as of now zero voltage voltage will be there here as of now negative maximum induced voltage will be there here so voltages are produced here or not yes 
for example for example see here if i close the switch means that i am showing some path to flow of current similarly these windings also these windings also are closed by its own closed by its own under that conditions voltages are there so currents will flow okay my rotor currents will flow now because of those rotor currents rotor flux will come to the air gap or not yes okay for example this is 100 volts this is 100 volts and means if it is 100 volts supply voltage is 100 volts back emf should be 100 volts for example if you are sitting on the conductor if you are sitting on the conductor in the stator stator poles are rotating here poles are rotating here you are going to get induced voltage or not obviously okay so the moment you have induced voltages that is nothing induced voltage is because of this pole rotation rmf rotating magnetic field voltages are induced those induced voltages are back emf like even in transformer okay so for example means supply voltage is v1 100 volts back emf per phase actually back emf per phase is 100 volts okay so for example these flux lines are 100 flux lines which are rotating okay so 100 volts 100 volts 100 flux lines at no load condition at no load condition same thing will happen here also 100 volts 100 volts 100 flux lines for example okay now for example if i close the load means if i close the this particular winding then here my what do you say secondary currents will carry like you know secondary windings are carrying current so because of that secondary flux will be generated or not yes so if secondary flux is generated by consider by taking i2 dash from the source from the source that pi2 dash will be compensated or not yes okay why 100 volts 100 volts 100 flux lines okay so if this source voltage you cannot change why because this is infinite source the amplitude and frequency cannot be changed for years so the amplitude and frequency of e1 also cannot be changed in ideal conditions of transformer okay there is no leakage impedance drop r1 and x1 okay under that condition if it is infinite source the amplitude and frequency are constant so this is also going to be the same means that operating flux will be same so then what will happen if somebody some other uh, somebody is trying to induce some flux okay if some flux is trying to disturb the flux pattern flux pattern pi naught pi naught flux pattern then what it will do my source voltage will inject compensating currents such that the extra flux lines will be killed okay similarly here also here also 100 volts 100 volts 100 flux lines this is going to be constant if supply voltage is constant back emf is going to be constant in the sense rms constant i want to say it's not like you know dc constant okay so for example if supply voltage is constant and uh, back emf is constant back emf is constant means flux lines are going to be constant now for example because of the closed uh, secondary winding or rotor winding if some secondary winding or rotor winding if some currents flow because of that rotor flux is coming to the air gap that particular flux will be killed by taking extra compensating current kind of i2 dash here okay so means to set up the flux i naught means my stator winding and to kill the flux of my rotor flux also it is taking current only so only one winding will be there in one winding only one winding only means my current will go to set up the flux also and my current will go to compensate armature flux also are kind of armature currents in the sense if only one winding is there to carry armature currents and also uh, to set up the field to set up the field all means if your both currents are flowing in a single winding it's a singly accelerated machine for example if you think of dc motor shunt motor for example actually few students feel that few students feel that like you know only one source is there no only one source is there one source is there it's a singly excited now if you think of alternator in alternator two sources will be there or let us think of motor only what's a big deal synchronous motor synchronous motor so in synchronous motor this is going to field winding this is going to field winding so armature winding is different field winding is different we have to consider but rather than that if you consider okay this is separate source of ac this is separate source of dc okay so two sources are there that's why it is doubly excited machine oh no it is wrong because for example here i have only one source 
okay though i have one source in order to set up the flux winding is different in order to carry the armature currents or load components of currents windings are different so we have to define okay doubly excited or singly excited doubly excited in a double excited okay so this is going to be doubly excited only though it is having single source why doubly excited because field winding is different okay for this field winding is different armature winding is different from winding point of view we have to say for example here field winding is different armature winding is different so doubly excited machine okay now many people uh, feel like you know in induction motor in induction motor for example means 100 volt 100 volt 100 flux lines is valid for synchronous motor also no because in synchronous motor supply voltage is v1 and back emf will be there back emf will be there supply voltage will be there 100 volts back emf 100 volts 100 flux lines okay so like you know even if it is loaded flux pattern cannot be changed in uh, air gap yes true i'm accepting i'm accepting but we should not say armature reaction is not there because when armature reaction has to be considered because of armature currents if flux pattern is changed flux pattern is changed means that we say armature reaction effects has to be considered for example in transformer because of i2 is flux pattern changed no for example in induction motor because of like you know flux created because of the rotor is net flux pattern is changed no but in DC machine, net flux pattern will change, like you know, it will have some cross magnetizing effects and all. So, we will see in DC machines. Okay, so flux, armature reaction has to be analyzed. In synchronous machine, also armature reaction has to be analyzed. Now, if you think of synchronous motor, 100 volt, 100 volt, 100 flux lines is okay, fine. But why we have to consider armature reaction? For example, if your field is producing 80 flux lines, 20 flux lines will be taken by this. If field is producing exactly 100 flux lines, means my stator will not take any current to set up the flux. If field is producing 120 flux lines, under that conditions, it will take current to kill the extra 20 flux lines. So armature reaction has to be considered or not? Yes. Okay. So in DC machine and synchronous machine, these two are doubly excited machines. Doubly excited machines will have like you know uh, armature reaction one great thing let me tell you okay so actually this is from interview point of view okay means it will not come in gate exam as of now because problem cannot be formed okay so see here when we can control reactive power from a machine dc machine like you know reactive power will not be there forget about it okay so for example in transformer ac machine induction machine ac machine synchronous machine ac machine in these three machines reactive power can be controlled in the sense reactive power can be supplied or can be absorbed only in, in, in synchronous not in these two why because very simple here very simple for example here 100 flux lines has to be set up here 100 flux lines has to be set up here also 100 flux lines has to be set up now this 100 flux lines has to be set up by this only there is no other way this 100 flux lines has to be set up by this only there is no other way but here that 100 flux lines can be set up either by field or by armature okay so here means like you know very simple in order to kill the flux in order to kill the flux reactive power will be supplied in order to absorb the sorry in order to set up the flux reactive power will be absorbed okay so means for example if 100 flux lines are required in the air gap means there is a flexibility here only that you may produce 120 flux lines such that extra 20 flux lines can be killed reactive power can be supplied for example, if you are producing only 80 flux lines, means that extra 20 flux lines has to be set up, created by the stator, so reactive power will be absorbed. So that 100 flux lines, say, what do you say, reference will be there in all these three machines, but that 100 flux lines can be separately produced by this, but here separately cannot be produced. So conclusion is damn simple. Okay, in order to control reactive power, machine should be doubly excited. Doubly excited. One thing. That's why in induction machine, in induction machine, like you know, we have one type of speed control. Okay, that is slip power injection method. In slip power injection method, okay, we are going to have two sources. We are going to have two sources. Like you know, reference will be there. Okay, so in order to control reactive power, machine should be doubly excited machine okay so in slip power injection method of induction motor speed control means we can control reactive power also because data separate supply will be there rotor separate supply will be there okay so means after this we will enter into induction machine